Father, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory for the gift of a new day and a new week. Thank you for 21 days of glory for bringing us unto the 18th day of glory. We are grateful. We appreciate. Is it 18th day or 17th day? We thank you for what you have done. Be that we exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. We commit ourselves to you this morning. We pray that every one of us online, on site, you visit us today and grant us the grace to pray and let the heavens be open to answer our prayers as we press on into this new ministerial year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we, I think today is 17th day. 17th day of glory. So we appreciate the Lord for thus far he has helped us. Uh, we are still looking at the theme of fruitfulness. Hoping that the Lord will grant us mercy and grace to be fruitful, very fruitful in this year that he has brought us to. So today we are going to be looking at the foundation of fruitfulness. Foundation of fruitfulness. Uh, whenever you want to do something, um, there is always a beginning. If you want to build a house, the first thing to do is to lay foundation. And the depth of the foundation, the strength of the foundation, we eventually determines the building, the height, and the size of the building that you are going to be building. Um, fruitfulness as foundation. When you see a man that is fruitful, uh, there are things about the man's life that are foundation for that fruitfulness. Uh, many times we want to be fruitful. We look at people that are fruitful. We desire to be fruitful like them. But when we don't have the proper foundation for fruitfulness, we eventually become nothing. Uh, we have seen that Jesus is expecting that having appointed us and chosen us, that we should go and bring forth fruit. He's expecting fruit. The husband man is shaking to see that each of the branch or each of the branches have fruit on it. Anyone that does not have fruit is taken away. And those that has fruit, he prunes that they will bring forth more fruit. And so the issue of fruitfulness is so important that we cannot just be satisfied with leaves leaves of activities we must ensure that there are tangible fruits coming out of our life if you think about the efforts you put in in your discipleship family or discipleship area to visit to evangelize to to pray and all of that and at the end of one month two months three months four months you want to see the fruits you want to see the number of disciples made number of souls won and you are not seeing it Rather, sometimes the people that you think that they are standing, they are going backward. There are some things that are lacking. It's either the proper foundation of fruitfulness is not laid in your own life. And then you also don't know how to lay it in the life of the people you are expecting to be fruitful. Now, I want us to read one or two passages as we journey in order to you know, trust God that by prayer this morning and by commitment of our lives to that foundation will be able to lay proper foundation for fruitfulness in this ministerial year. Matthew chapter 13, I think I want to read from verse 1, then maybe to verse 8 or so. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, the great multitude were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake 
many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much at and forthwith they spr sprung up because they had no deepness of art. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no roots, they withered away. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprung up and shook them. But others fell into the good ground and brought forth fruit, some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Before we speak on that, let's also read the same account in Luke chapter 8. Jesus gave this same parable in Mark and in Luke. But I think we need to read that of Luke uh, to uh, be able to discuss them together. In Luke chapter 8, the same story. Let me read verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Let me read further. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Now, if you remember that the seed was carried by the sower who went out to sow his seed. And some of the seed fell by the wayside. And then, some of the seed fell on stony ground. Some of the seed fell on thorny ground. Then some of the seed fell on good ground. Now, he now said that the seed that brought forth fruit, because the one that fell on good ground brought forth fruit. This, the, 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 the seed that brought forth fruit is the word of God. That is to say, when you are expecting a fruit in your life, there is a seed, there is something that must go into your life first. You don't reap where you have not sown. I think it's a common saying. Any farmer who is idle at home and other farmers are carrying their seed to the farm to sow. And during harvest, the same farmer now goes to harvest. 
that farmer must be a thief because if you don't sow you will not reap so can we agree that the foundation of fruitfulness is the seed will you be able to agree with me that until the seed is sown in the ground there will be no fruit that will come up do you know that sometimes some mango fruit or mango tree or maybe orange that are in public places you may not know who sowed it sometimes some of those trees on their own you know came up but the fact that you don't know who sowed the seed does not know the fact that there was a seed before the tree come up no tree will ever come up see it doesn't happen are you getting this now so when you see a tree that is producing fruits when you see a a, a, a farm product somebody is going to the farm to harvest he has sown the seed the reason behind fruitlessness in the life of many believers is because the seed was not sown first of all i know that there are problems with uh, maybe the ground upon which the seed is sown but permit me to first of all stand on the ground on the fact that without the seed there will be no fruit and if you will also agree with me the quantity of seed sown determines the quantity of fruit that you will have will you agree with me if a farmer takes one cup of maize to a farm and another farmer takes one bag of maize seed to a farm and sold all of them and this other farmer sold one cup how many of them do you expect of the two which of them do you expect that will have more fruit more fruit eh? the one that sold more seed the one that sold more seed we end up having more fruit believers listen until we take the seed seriously until we are committed to the seed forget about the fruit the fruit is a product of the seed without the seed there will be no fruit and how careless a man is with the seed we determine how he is going to have the fruit how careful how committed how seriously a man takes the seed is going to reflect in the level amount quality of fruits that will be coming out of his life how quality or qualitative the, the seed is determines the quality of the fruit too are you still agreeing with me the jesus said jesus said now the parable is this this is a parable and of course the people that he gave the parable the multitude did not even understand the parable but he, he was not even careful to explain to them it was the disciples that he he was now explaining to them because the disciples were asking him oh God, why are you talking to these people in parable they are not understand even we are, we are not even understanding the parable he now say i know you don't understand even they then said they don't understand but i'm not careful about explaining to them now for you let me explain the parable he said the seed is the word of god brothers and sisters please pay attention this morning you have passed through a physical year we are ending it in about two weeks time from january to december now you ask yourself what is the fruit 
that I have borne to the Lord. What is the extent of my fruitfulness unto God in this physical year? How many souls have I won? How many disciples have I made? What is the fruit of righteousness that was coming out of my life to the glory of God? For many of us, you cannot be able to say this is the number of souls. For many of us, you have had leaves. For many of us, you have, you know, done a lot of things, but you cannot pinpoint what the fruit, the quantity of the fruit is. Do you know where the problem is? The problem is the seed. Are, are you getting me? The seed. How careful are you with the seed? How committed are you to the seed? The seed is the word of God. But, see, the sower went out to sow his seed. Now, if the seed that is the word of God is not sown in your life, properly sown in your life, there will be no fruit. This is the reason behind the fruitlessness that we have ever seen so far. How a man is committed to the word of God. Your commitment, your personal commitment to the word of God, not just the word of God that you are hearing or you are reading, but the one that you allow to be sown into your life. Are you, are you getting me? Do you know that you can hear the word of God, you can read the word of God, and you say, well, thank God, you know, I like what our church Bible readers used to say. When they finish reading, what do they normally say? This is what the word of God. And the congregation replies, how? Thanks be to God. And everybody goes his way. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you noticing something? The, what I have read is what? The word of God. And the people are saying, Thank God you have what? Read the word of God. What is the next program? Praises and worship. Let's continue. Now, that is a very serious matter. Because for some of us, that is how it is. Is it time for message? Okay, message. Who is the preacher? Okay, let's listen. You know, after that, ask the same person, what did you learn last Sunday, last Monday, when you attended class? He will start saying, eh, last Monday. Okay, where is my note? Let me, to show you that the seed was not sown in his life. The thing is in his note. For those that are copying note, because for him to be able to even remember what he heard last Sunday, he has to consult where he wrote it, showing that the thing did not enter into his life. Are you getting me at all? Years ago, God spoke to me and said, listen, listen. If you want me to use you to do great things in this life, it's not, and that word is not particularly about me. He just wanted to tell me something that is general. He said, then you must take my word seriously. The extent of your commitment to my word is the extent of how far I will use you to help other people's life. The extent of a man's commitment to the word of God is the extent of his usefulness in the hand of God. I, I'm not sure you heard me well. Let me repeat that sentence. The extent of a man's commitment to the word of God is the extent of his usefulness in the hand of God. The extent of his fruitfulness in the things of God. If you see me make disciples, listen, if you see me make disciples, it's not because I'm smart. It's not because I'm intelligent. It's not because I am walking up here and there. Some of us, you are very active. Eh? You are very active. You, you are you not very active? Are you not praying very actively? Eh? Are you not going out for evangelism, visiting people? It's not about active activity. No. It's about the seed. What is producing fruit is what? 
the seed what is your commitment to the seed what is your attitude to the seed what has god told you and how seriously did you take it sometimes and let me say this there is a difference between the word of god that is written they call it logos and the word of god that god is speaking to you they call it rema are you getting me the seed is not the logos the logos is the letters and the bible said the letter does what kills the rema is the one that gives life jesus said in john 6 63 it is the spirit that gives life the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak to you they are spirits and they are what they are life the seed is not prayer prayer is important and somebody can pray for long that's no problem but if the seed is not sown in his life the word the response of god the word of god into your life forget about the fruit you will make noise for some time out of emotional excitement but after a while you will have a problem with the fruit there are many many works that looks exciting many many ministries that looks exciting they say it's a prophetic deliverance this one that one but when you want to know how seriously they take the word of god sowing the word into people's life and some even you know somebody was, was telling i think you are the one that was telling me where you gather and what they take time to do is to each person will tell his dream and then whoever have interpretation for the dream will interpret is it not the same thing that god saw people doing before and he spoke in jeremiah 23 verse um, i think verse 28 he said let him that has a dream do what tell his dream but let him that has my word speak my word faithfully for what is the shaft to the wheat and in verse 29 he said is not my word like fire is not my word like fire says the lord is not my word like hammer that breaks the rock in pieces they don't give attention to the word of god and they are expecting fruit to come out of that level whether it is in your life whether it is in a ministry in a work wherever the seed is neglected wherever the seed is despised you will not see lasting fruit are you getting me you can keep a work you can maintain activity around people but if you want to see righteousness the fruit of righteousness do you remember philippians 1 verse 11 that you may be filled with the fruit of righteousness eh the seed the seed are you aware that even for people to get born again at all in the first place let's start from there for anybody to get born again the seed of the word of god must be sown in that person's life look at first peter chapter two chapter um, one verse 23 to 25 first peter chapter one verse 23 to 25 he said being born again not of in, not of corrupt corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away but the word of god endure it forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you he said how did we got born again listen he said we got born again 
by a seed. And that seed is the word of God that came to us when the gospel was preached to us. In other words, before you see any soul, repent. Listen. You know we can intercede for soul. Do you remember? We can pray for souls to rep repent. But until the seed is sown in that person's life, the Spirit of God will have no tool to work out the person's salvation. That was the case with Cornelius. If salvation can come by prayer alone, you remember that the man's prayer came up. His arms came up as a memorial before God. But what is the problem with Cornelius? There was no seed. So there can be no fruit. There can be no fruit. Activities of prayer is going on. Activities of arms giving is going on. But the seed is lacking. And so heaven has to send an angel to go and tell Cornelius to look for Peter to travel to that Gentile nation in order to sow the seed. And the Bible says, as Peter was still preaching, Acts 10, 44, Peter was sowing the seed, sowing the seed, sowing the seed. What happened? The spirit said, uh -huh. now I have found an instrument to walk in the life of these people. The spirit fell upon them. Do not neglect the seed. Do not neglect the seed. Sometimes when I, I want to preach the gospel to somebody, you know, I say, let me sow the seed into this person's life. And you know sometimes when you sow a seed, it doesn't terminate immediately. It may take some time. In fact, not some time. Every time you sow a seed, seed takes time to die and germinate and even grow before fruit comes. True of us. The seed is the word of God. Both in your life and from your life. And that is the problem. Do you know that the seed that is not in you, you can't sow it in another person's life. And that's why you cannot produce fruit when the seed is insufficient, is lacking in your own life. What is your commitment to the seed? Brothers and sisters, shake your fruitfulness in the past years. Shake your fruitfulness. Don't tell me that you are reading Bible every day. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how are you committed in not just reading the Bible or listening to messages that are everywhere now, online, on-site, everywhere, but how committed are you in letting that word become part of your life because the seed must be sown into your life that is the problem the seed is there preachers are preaching the seed the writers are writing the seed then the seed is also you can get it but how much of the seed has entered you are you getting it now because that will determine how much of the fruit that will come out how much of the seed has become your life has become your life you will look at this the word of god and you will look at your life you will notice that your life has genuinely conformed to the word what the the word say is what you are doing and ezra has prepared his heart to seek the law of the lord to do it and to teach it in Israel. That's a, a typical example of what we are talking about. And Ezra, Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. And Ezra has prepared his heart to seek the word of God. To seek the seed. Now, because you can't find the seed carelessly. Was it not Jeremiah that said, your word was found and I did eat them and your word become to me so Ezra knew that for me to get the word I have to seek it and why the preparation of heart because 
you need you know when you when you are pre you prepare for something eh? have you had somebody say um see i, I i'm here i'm prepared for you <laughs> you know when it's uh, so, so like i'm prepared for you it means the person is ready if it is fight if it's uh, a, 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 whatever you want is that i'm prepared Ezra has prepared his heart to seek the word of God. So, if you are going to get the seed, the word, the spoken word, there must be some level of heart preparation. Are you getting it? And then to do it, now listen, when you hear the word, when you hear the word, the word has not become your life, has not been sown into your life until you do it. Did you hear me? The seed is the word. But the seed cannot produce anything until it is sown. So what I'm dealing with now is what? The sowing of the seed into your life. What produces fruit is not just a seed in a plate. But a seed that is sown in the ground. Are you following me? If you get a maze that is on the table... That maize can stay in that table for one year, two years. Will it produce any fruit? The day you are expecting the maize to produce fruit is the day you carry the maize and sow it into the ground. When the ground and the maize become one, because you will cover it and nobody will even know, that's when you are expecting that after some time, there will be fruit. The problem we have is not the messages that we are hearing. The problem we have is that we have not allowed the messages that we are hearing to do what? To affect our lives. Our life is not changing by the messages we have had. We get excited at the word, at the message. But to do it, to do it, how many of us, we have heard a lot of messages in IMDC, we heard in uh, so many messages coming in these 21 days, even during the 40 days, we are no powerful messages coming in those days. But how many are careful to go back and ensure that what I have heard is inside of my life? That's how you know those that are going to produce fruit or not. And let me say this. Whether in your life or in the life of others, if the seed will produce fruit, we have seen that for people to be born again, eh, there's no other way. You must sow the seed, the word of God, into their life. You must preach the word of God in, and they will hear it. It's not a common, a common talk. Sometimes you ask people, are you preaching the gospel? He said he's talking to people about righteousness, about, you know, he's correcting them. I said, that's not preaching. That's not preaching. The, the, the seed is the word of God. And that's why if you are going to really, listen, it's not the word of man. It must be the word of God. It must be the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When we know the power of the word, when we know the importance of the word, when we know what the word is, is it not John 1, 1 that said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. When we know the power that is inside the word, inside the seed, then we will take the seed seriously. In Hebrew 4 verse 12, it said, the word of God is living and powerful. The word of God is what? Living and powerful. What is powerful? Full of power. Full of power. Which power? Human power? No. That is to say, God has embedded his full power in his word. The word of God is living and powerful. Full of God's power. Sometimes you see people say he's looking for power. He's seeking for power. He's fasting for power. When he's not taking the word of God seriously. The word of God is living and powerful. That is an instrument of sanctification. Eh? 
now you are already clean by the word that I have spoken to you. Sanctify them by your word, for your word is true. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. Now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Acts 20.32 I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which has ability, the word of his grace has ability to build you up and to make you to have inheritance among them that are sanctified. How will the word of God be able to give you inheritance? It is when you be, start producing fruit that the inheritance comes. Are you getting me? Now, John the Baptist was in the wilderness for almost 18 years. For a long time, living in the wilderness, praying, fasting, doing everything. Do you know that until the word of God came to John, nothing happened out of his life? Look at it in Luke chapter 3. I just pray that God will help us this morning. God will just do a miracle in our spirit. Open our heart to see that without the word, we are not going far with him and in fruitfulness. Luke chapter 3. Somebody should be able to make a fresh commitment to the word of God this morning. If you are expecting to bring forth fruit. Luke chapter 3. Verse 1. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Pontius Pilate being governor of Judah. And Herod being tetrarch of Galilee. And his brother Philip. Tetrarch of Eturia and of the region of Triconitis, and Lysanias, the Tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priest. What happened? The word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And the next verse, and he came into the country about. Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Then verse 7. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him. O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the rot to come? Amen. I want to sit here that there are men that are in political positions Men are in religious positions. At least verse 1 was able to list political leaders. And then verse 2 listed the religious leaders. Annas and Caiaphas. They are the ones in charge of the church. The temple. They are the bishops and the high priests. I mean, the pastors that are taking care of the temple. Where people normally go to worship. But the Bible said... The word of God came unto John, the son of Zechariah, not in the temple. We are in the wilderness. And the moment the word of God came, he moved out to preach. The moment the seed hit the life of John, remember the seed is what? The seed is what? The word of God. John has been in the wilderness until the seed came. It was when the seed came to him. Are you following me? That was when fruit began to come out of his life. That was when the fruit began to come out of his life. Now listen. This can be taken in various dimensions. You can be doing a lot of things until God speaks to you. Until you, you hear God. Until the seed comes. And you begin to do what the seed said. You know, the Bible says the word of God came to John in the wilderness. But excuse me, did he exactly tell us what God told him? Eh? He didn't tell us what God told him. But can we deduce what God told John as a seed? 
from the activities that he carried out after the seed came we can be able to say that god must have come to john in the wilderness and say my son john there is a work you are going to do and that is the work of baptizing people in water dipping them in water now i'm going to send my son to come and be baptized why you are baptizing one day he will come and you will know that he is my son when you see the heavens open and the, the spirit descending upon him like a dove are you following me And then he said, but before people will start coming for the baptism, you have to leave this wilderness oh, and go to the countries where they are living and preach that they should repent and come for baptism. Listen, do you know that before, before John started baptism, there was no history in the whole world from the time the world started to the time John was living about baptism? Are you aware that John was the first person that started the ministry of baptizing people in the water? That's how you know those that the seed has come to. Are you getting me? There are several people in the ministry today that are copycats. Copy what? They look at what the seed is producing in the life of another man of God. <laughs> Oh, are you getting me at all? The fruit you are seeing in that ministry, the fruit you are seeing in that man's life, and how he, he patterned his ministry and activity is as a result of the seed that came to him. The word of God came to John. That's what the Bible told us. It was one day that John was baptizing in the book of John chapter 1. He said that he that sent me to baptize told me something. Have you read it before? He said, he that sent me to baptize, he told me that upon whomever you see the Spirit descending and resting upon him, he is the one. Therefore, as I saw the Spirit descend upon this one and resting, this is the Lamb of God. Are you getting this now? And God told him that this is your ministry. Once you are able to show him to the whole world, your ministry is finished. You know, sometimes people will say, um... John the Baptist was beheaded, he died, and this one, that one. We can use those things to preach. But do you know that in God's own program for John, his ministry is just to reveal Jesus. His ministry is, is a forerunner just to tell people that this is the Son of God. That's the word. And the moment he finished it, it was put aside. That was why the Bible said, now when Jesus heard that John was put in prison, he went out. In, read your Bible carefully. Matthew chapter 4 verse 12. When Jesus heard that John was put in prison, he now knew that that imprisonment of John is the end of John's ministry, which is revealing him. So he now knows that now I am revealed. It is time for me to start. Are you getting me? Where is the seed? The word came to John. You know, when you see somebody say, God has called me this one, that one. Check the fruit coming out of that life, that, that, that work. If you don't see fruit, then there is no seed. Some of us that are disciples to family fathers, you see, when we ask you to go for set apart, when we ask you to, you know, separate yourself, it is for you to hear the word. It is for you to get to know the exact thing the, the Lord wants you to do. The seed must come to you. This is the way to do it. When the seed came to John, his ministry become fruitful and your ministry your work your labor can never be fruitful until the seed came isaiah prophesied from chapter one to chapter five and he was laboring in vain until chapter six the seed came if you check his ministry from chapter six to the end of isaiah you will see a man of god indeed 
Are you getting me? That's why most of the prophets that we are recorded in the scripture, they will always start, and the word of God came to Micaiah, the son of so and so. Are you getting it? And the word of God came to Ezekiel, and the word of God came to Jeremiah, and the word of God came to because it is only the seed coming to you that generates the what? The fruit that will be shown out of your life. Where is the seed? And how seriously have you taken the seed? How are you seeking like Ezra to get the word? To, you know, you have to be committed. God has to see your commitment, your heart commitment to the word. Before he will now speak to you. The, 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 the real rema that will take you into fruitfulness. So this morning as we pray. We are going to review our attitude to the word of God. I said, we are going to review our attitude, both in getting the word and in doing the word. Because when you neglect the seed again, at this beginning of the year, by the end of the year, you will see that you will not have the fruit. You will not have the fruit. So both the, the word for our life, are you following me? And the word for the ministry, we must have to labor to get them. The word that will produce the fruit of righteousness in our life, the fruit of the spirit in our life, and the word that we produce fruits in our labors, in our ministry, we must labor to get them. We must work hard to get them. We must wait upon the Lord until the word comes to us. Let's rise as we pray.